There's a man who doesn't know what he's going through. He pressed his pregnant wife against a wall. This caused her to bleed. And at night, he died suddenly. His death was horrible. The wife was terrified. She saw a black shadow running around and she ran into her room. She couldn't even close the door. Our resistance was in vain. The black shadow knocked her down with one punch. When she woke up and touched her stomach, she realized that the baby was gone again. This is the third time this year. She's had a miscarriage and lost her husband. Luckily, she still has a sister with her. The police officers for Polo was also confused. This is an outrageous way to die. The man's neck was twisted upside down. Is the murderer an acrobat? The heroine can even go home and take a shower. The streetlights flickered and scared her. That's not all. Her windows and doors don't close properly. They open and close again. The heroine was so scared she almost fainted. Her sister came to see her. Only then did she realize they weren't real sisters. The heroine has always wanted to have her own flesh and blood. But on the other side of the city, there's a female tour guide in her fifties who's heading home. She felt someone was following her. So she locked the door, but when she looked up, a big bloody mouth is coming straight at her. Is it going to eat her? She opened her eyes, she found a strange man in black with a bloody mouth next to her, and he says he'll kill her last, it's a horrible scene. Then the man in black dialed the female doctor's number without hesitation. This scene reminds her of a surgery over 10 years ago. That scene was even more gory than the current thrillers. At night, she wanted to stay home and enjoy her rest. Suddenly she found a female ghost in her house, in the blink of an eye. She realized she couldn't move. She watched as the man in black threw the ghost to the ground. That That's when Anna realized she wasn't in her own house, but in the house of a female doctor. Is she traveling back in time? Anna didn't understand what was going on. The man in black grabbed the trophy. The man in black grabbed the trophy and knocked the doctor out of her body. Anna screamed in terror. She woke up in her own house, but the wound on the back of her head, the wound on the back of her head, started to hurt and bleed again. Was everything last night real? Not a dream. The female doctor is really dead. Detective Peter looks serious. Is this the same killer as Anna's husband? The killer's methods are to brutal. It's even worse than the villains in horror movies. After Anna found out, she realized she was a super detective, she could see the whole murder process, but the killing wasn't over yet. Then Anna realized there was an old man lying next to her. No matter how much she screamed, the old man didn't move, he was probably scared out of his wits by her screams. And the long-haired man in black crawled over to her, like a creepy crawly monster in a horror movie. It's a frightening sight. Right after the old man died, Anna went into her psychic mode. It's like having a clairvoyant outfit. She's always one step ahead of the police in every case. She sees everything. Yesterday it was the lady doctor. Today it's the old man. Anna was really panicked this time. She grabbed her sister and rushed into the police station. She told them everything she saw. The policeman's jaw dropped in shock. He followed Anna to the scene. Half convinced, turns out the old man was really dead. And it was a horrible death. Anna described the murder. The police started to draw a picture according to the description. But in the end, it didn't look like a human being. It was more like a ghost from hell. The female agent had a suspicious look in her eyes. Anna, is this a TV show? Otto was furious and said she would prove it to her. That's when the lights started flashing. The cell phone rings and the caller calls her Emily. Anna was confused. She's not Emily. Did he get the wrong number? The voice on the other end of the phone was like a spell. Little by little, it brought back memories for Anna. Then the name Gabriel came out of her mouth. The laughter on the other end of the line was eerie and goosebump inducing. Anna rushed her sister to her foster parents' home. She realized that when she was a child, she didn't just talk to herself. She used to talk in the air. It was worse than a ghost story. The foster parents thought Anna had an imaginary friend. If only they'd given her more love, she'd have been fine. They didn't realize that this friend was a guide, who knew that this friend would be a guide to a terrible secret. What happened to Anna? She tried to kill the baby in her foster mom's womb, and then she surprised herself. So Suddenly Anna's heart was beating faster than a drum. And then Chad, the FBI's best cop, came in. The case was like magic. The killer was nowhere to be seen. Anna was screaming at the top of her lungs. Jack's eyes are amazing. He saw the man in black hiding on the roof. As soon as he looked in the mirror, his reflexes are like a real-life superhero. The man in black jumped downstairs. Jack had to jump with him. The two of them play hide-and-seek in an abandoned warehouse. This scene must be more tense than a game. When the hypnotist disappeared, Anna's memory is like a floodgate being opened. All those sealed memories came flooding out. It almost made Anna faint from the headache. It turns out that the big boss behind the scene is Anna's imaginary friend. In the end, 
the plot was to reverse, the tour guide who was tied up in the attic wanted to sneak out, but he accidentally fell from the top. Un was so shocked by this scene that she broke down and screamed. When Jack entered the attic, he was shocked, isn't this the legendary murderer suit? This attic is more realistic than a horror movie set, it's full of all kinds of torture props, the evidence is so obvious, what else can Anna say? But Anna insisted that she was innocent, she insisted that she was framed, at this point, Jack was no longer convinced, he insisted that Anna was the murderer, Anna panicked, and the light bulbs went off one by one, so suddenly, he arrives, the phone rings, the phone rings and it's answered, it's Gabriel with the rough voice, and he threatens to come back and take his equipment, that's a scary thing to say, what's going on now? The case looks more and more like a labyrinth, is Gabriel a man, a ghost or a god? Anna's sister didn't believe it, she set out on her own to find the truth, she went straight to Anna's old hospital, there she found a video of a surgery from Anna's past, after watching the video, the truth came out, Anna's mom was a tour guide, but at 15, she was already a mom, she had to hand Anna over to the hospital and leave quietly. When Anna was seven, the hospital found a tumor in her brain, and this tumor was unusual. It had a mind of its own, it played with electricity, it killed the paramedics. This tumor was the strange-shaped monster behind Anna. What's the difference between Deadly Sense and what's commonly referred to as a split personality movie? There's essentially no difference. Emily and Gabriel are designed to be parasitic twins, with Gabriel feeding off of Emily most of the time. Emily's subjective will is able to overpower Gabriel's evil powers, but there are also times, such as when Emily is vulnerable, when Gabriel has the upper hand. Isn't this a symptom of dual personalities? Two personalities coexisting in the same body. Sometimes this one is strong, sometimes that one is dominant, and the subject thus displays a distinctly different duality of characterization. The director's past horror films are very traditional. He has been more concerned with designing a narrative approach to horror that works than with emphasizing the director's personalized aesthetic vision of the film. This time, however, Deadly Sensation is clearly looking for a change, so it continues the director's haunted house movie opening, but develops into a slightly more conceptualized work.